Here's the exact training plan I used to run the Austin Marathon in three hours and 34 minutes. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do for each day of the week leading up to your half or full marathon. But before I break down my unique way of training, let me talk about the old way of training. I'll show you exactly what most runners are doing. And if you download a marathon or a half marathon training plan off Google, this is what it's gonna look like. So what's gonna have you do, it's gonna have you run five times a week. And I'll break it down what it looks like right now. So on Monday, what's gonna have you do is run. On Tuesday will be another form of running. On Wednesday, you'll be running again. This could be speed intervals, this could be hills, but the point is on Wednesday, you're running. On Thursday, if you're lucky, it will have you do some form of cross training. Then on Friday, you'll be back out running more miles. And then Saturday, after you've already ran that much, it'll have you be doing your, your longest run of the week, which will be a long run. And then Sunday will be your day off. So as you can see, five day, days of running. And the biggest problem with running five times a week or even more is the amount of volume you are doing per week. Especially if this is your first half of full marathon, you haven't been running that much or you're brand new to running. That much volume of running just about every single day is going to lead to an overuse injury. There's a study by Yale that suggested 50% of average runners get injured each year with the main issue being the amount of volume they're doing and it leads to overuse injuries, knee problems, shin splints, feet, ankle, and hip problems. And like I said, it's all because of the amount of volume they're doing. And so if you wanna get injured, follow this training plan. It's great, you'll, you'll end up getting injured. It happened to me when I was training for my first marathon several years ago. I tried following a similar training plan to that, like that, and I ended up getting runner's knee. And I wasn't able to run for up to two months. It's very difficult to train when you're injured. So if you wanna get injured, yeah, follow this training plan. You'll, you'll, you'll achieve your goal, you'll get injured. <laughs> But all jokes aside, right, let me show you the way I train and the way my clients train and how you're able to train for half a full marathon by only running three times a week. Okay, here is how I run three times a week for my half and full marathon. As you'll see, I have a balance between running and strength training. Three days of running, three days of lifting. I'll break down exactly the, what I do and then we'll go in more in depth with day by day of what each workout looks like. So here's an overview of what it looks like. On Monday, we'll be strength training. Tuesday, you'll go for a run. Wednesday, you'll be in the gym lifting weights. Thursday, back outside running. Friday, back in the gym lifting weights. Saturday is the last day of running. And then Sunday is your day off. Okay, so as you can see, three days of running, three days of lifting. Now there are two main reasons why this training plan works so much better than the training plan I just showed you, and it's simply because of strength training and the amount of running you're doing. Starting off with strength training, if you wanna finish a marathon or half marathon strong, you have to have the physical strength to do this. I always say you have to have the physical strength required to run half or full marathons. A lot of runners at the end of the race will really start to fall off a cliff. Their times will be significant slower. The reason is because they didn't have the physical strength to maintain their pace for the entire race. And so to do that, you have to build up the strength. And then the other reason is running. Like I talked about, a lot of runners who run five, six, seven times a week, they get injured just because of the amount of volume they're doing. Think of all the the steps you take when you run miles after miles, the amount of pounding on the pavement over and over and over again, all that leads to an injury. So if you only run three times a week, you're able to build up your, your aerobic base, get into cardiovascular shape, but since you're giving yourself time throughout the week to recover, your chances of getting injured drastically reduces. Okay, so let me break down the strength training workouts and then the running into a more manageable bite-sized pieces that you can implement every single day of the week. So starting off with strength training, I train Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the, the split I use is a push-pull leg split. So a push on Mondays, legs is on Wednesday, and then Friday is pull. So what that means, push is your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps, legs is your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, and then pull is your back and your biceps. Right? And so 
Exercises that I would do on a push day would be bench press, incline bench, or dumbbells. I could be overhead shoulder press, tricep extensions, any, any exercise that trains your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. That's on Monday. On Wednesday, this is arguably the most important day of the week, and that is when you train legs, build up your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings. When you're running long distances, you'll notice it, the, the main reason that you start to slow down is because you don't have the physical strength to maintain your pace. When I was running the Austin Marathon, my hamstrings started to give me issues, but the reason it didn't slow me down at all was because I had the, the physical strength in my hamstrings to be able to keep going and, and not have it not affect me. So doing squats, doing leg presses, Romanian deadlifts, quad extensions, hamstring curls, calf raises, all of those, and really pushing yourself through those workouts is what's gonna give you the strength required to run half and full marathons. And then lastly, doing a pull day on Friday, which is your back and your biceps. That's the deadlifts, the rows, the lat pull downs, the bicep curls, uh, hammer curls, right? All of that is for your, for your arms and your back. So Monday, push, Wednesday, legs, Friday is your pull day. So for Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, that is when you run. So on Tuesday, I do a medium run. On Thursday is a shorter run, and I'll break down why I train the way I train, but on Thursday is a short run. And then Saturday is the long run. Three days of running, short, medium, and long. I do a medium run on Tuesdays because on Thursday is you want to do a shorter run because if you train legs on Wednesday and you train properly, you're going to be sore and you want to use that following day, that Thursday to be able to recover, not have to put a lot of pressure on running long distances, just run a couple miles, uh, but still be able to, to get some miles in. But Thursday is really just a recovery run. And then Saturday is the long run, the most important run of the week testing your ability to run longer distances, testing your mental strength, and of course your physical strength. So three days of running, a medium run on Tuesday, short run on Thursday, and a long run on Saturday. And to give you some miles, it really depends on where you're at with your training. A short run, for the most part, is anywhere from two to four miles. A medium run could be anywhere from five to eight miles. And then a long run, depending on, like I said, where you are at the training, could be anywhere from 10 to 20 miles. So that's how I train for my half and full marathons. Three days of running, three days of lifting. It's worked really well for me. It's worked really well for all my clients. And if you want more in-depth training, if you want a 12-week half marathon training plan or a 16-week full marathon training plan, I created a PDF that you can download. It's completely free. I'll leave a link in the description and you're able to follow that for the entire duration of your training.